thanks for checking out the Bosch and Roll channel. If you want to see your deck featured on the channel, hang out with me and the amazing Bosch and Roll community on Discord. Access to my list and sideboard guides before tournaments, or book an individual coaching session. Check out the Patreon and YouTube member links in the video description. Use the code Bosch and Roll to get 10% off the best magic apparel on the market at coalesceapparel.shop. If you want to play what I'm playing, use my affiliate link to order cards from tcgplayer.com or play any deck anytime with a Magic Online loan account from cardhoarder.com. Thanks again for being here. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boss and Roll channel. Today I'm playing Legacy at the request of Patreon subscriber Yuin, and I am rocking Dredge. Dredge is a deck that I have kind of an interesting relationship with because when I was preparing to make my intro statement just there, I was kind of like, do I say like, and today we're the bad guys or like some tagline like that, which may have been true five years ago, 10 years ago, but Dredge is kind of just this like fun thing that exists now. And there, like there was a long time where it was like, if you're not ready for Dredge, you're going to lose to Dredge. And the best weekend to play Dredge is the worst weekend to play Dredge because everyone's going to know that everyone else has hate. And there's just this like metagame fluctuation thing where Dredge was always in the format, but everybody packed enough hate. But when a Dredge player sniffed out a weekend where there wasn't enough hate, they just easily won the tournament. And that's not really the case anymore. Dredge isn't really the go-to graveyard deck. We have Black Red Reanimator now. We have Oops All Spells now, both of which are soft to the same sort of things, but more resilient in general. And queuing into Dredge or, or playing Dredge now kind of feels more like we're playing Rug Delver or something, you know, like a deck that was like, you know, fun in an older format, but isn't quite real anymore, or like uh, a blue stone blade deck. Like all the cards are still legal. The deck's still powerful. This is very much still a legacy power level deck. It's just not like the the baddie boot on the throat of the format kind of thing, always looking in the shadows that it used to be. That's just reanimator now. But all that said, Dredge has gotten some new tools in recent years. We've got one Hogak in the deck. And the times I play against Dredge, the Hogak is frequently the scariest thing. Because when you warp your deck to defeat graveyard stuff like keep bridge from below is out of play and exile or well, bridge from below out of graveyards they they rarely come into play and like exile acreids and whatever like hogak can just come in as a totally different type of thing on a kind of low resource situation like one golgari dr grave troll a good dredge off of that can get you a hogak from nothing so hogak's kind of scary but it is just a one-of. It's not really a plan in the deck. It's just a thing that the deck can do. The one-of Ox of Agonis, very similar. Dredge used to play cards like Cephalid Sage or Sphinx of Lost Truths as a Dread Return target to draw a bunch of cards right away and supercharge their dredging. Ox of Agonis just does that on its own. It's bigger than those creatures. The draw ability is better than those creatures. And also... You don't need Dread Return because it just has Escape on it for a very reasonable escape cost of Red Red. Huge upgrade in Ox of Agonis. Grief has replaced Unmask. Like Unmask has been played in Vintage Dredge since the ancient times. Just having free spells in your deck that wants to play a low mana game and a short game makes a lot of sense. And Grief is almost a strict upgrade because it's a creature, which triggers Bridge from Below when it dies. So your Unmask comes with some number of zombies a lot of the time. You can't grief yourself, which is the same problem with Reanimator, where like Reanimator frequently wants to unmask itself. So splitting grief and unmask, even though like grief is better, because sometimes you can reanimate it, but sometimes unmask is better because Grizzlebrand's stuck in your hand. There's a little tension there. This deck is going to want to unmask itself a lot less often than a Reanimator deck will. So grief just major upside there. And as recently as currently standard legal, Otherworldly Gaze, one blue, look at the top three cards of your library, put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest back on the library in any order, and this card has flashback. This is card selection, and with a deck that uses its graveyard as much as this one does, it can also be card advantage. This could play very much like one blue draw three cards, just Ancestral Recall here, or it could be better if it sets up like 
putting two dredgers in your graveyard and putting a breakthrough on top of the deck that could represent like 20 and beyond cards that you see that turn it's all set up by the one un otherworldly gaze and if you dredge it over you can flash it back and it's still there just really awesome new tool and the backbone of the modern dredge deck there is no combo line in the main deck like a uh, dredge of ancient times used to dread return for flamekin zealot and attack with a bunch of three three zombies all in one turn Flame Kinsella got replaced by Dragonlord Colagon because it did mostly the same thing, but also was a respectable card on its own, which Flame Kinsella does not. But Dread Return is not in this main deck. I have not seen it in main decks in a long time. I think Dredge players have figured out that just grinding and using Bridge from Below and Hogak and Ox and Icarid for value is the way to do this. But there are Dread Returns in this sideboard. Ewan's build in particular has a Iona and an Elish Norn in the sideboard. You bring those in in matchups where these cards are lights out, like against elves or like death and taxes or something, Elish Norn will be a plague wind that then they have to answer somehow or else it'll just kill them. Elish Norn can also sort of overrun your team, like plus two, plus two for all your zombies real quick. Icarid cracks for five that turn and uh, it just ends the game very quickly. Iona, you'd probably bring this in against Elves as well, or Storm, or Burn, or anyone who can just beat you by going unfair, and you just name the color of the most important cards in their deck, and it's a 7-7. That wins the game quickly from there. Blightsteel Colossus is a little bit interesting, because you can't reanimate this card, because if it would be put in the graveyard from anywhere, reveal it and put it into your library instead. This is not here to be a reanimation target, this is here to keep you from decking. Ewan specifically mentioned Painter uh, when I was sent this deck as the explanation for Lightsteel Colossus. Like, it is pretty funny if you get painted, they mill your entire deck, which is what you're trying to do anyway. And then Lightsteel Colossus just, like, pops back in and you get a draw step and then literally your entire deck at your disposal to beat your opponent with that turn. That's pretty good stuff. I hope it comes up. I think that might be a little too cute, but again, I'm not a dredge expert. I will keep an eye on that side word slot as we go. The counter hate in this deck is Nature's Claim, which is kind of interesting to me because I feel like Chain of Vapor would just be more generic. Uh, like Chain of Vapor gets anything out of play where Nature's Claim has to be an artifact or enchantment. Also, I've seen Force of Vigor in dredge decks, but this build definitely doesn't have enough green cards to support that, so I, I like that that's not the play. Sideboarding is going to be the hardest part because I'm not a dredge expert, and games two and three are always the hardest part with dredge. Somehow I've tricked myself into going card by card through a dredge list where basically we're just trying to replace our draw steps with dredges and win out of the graveyard very quickly. Simple plan, but a lot of moving parts. I'm excited about it. Let's try this thing. This is Dredge. Let's go. I'm on the draw in round one, and Dredge is, of course, a deck famously susceptible to mulligans, and I'm going to do one. This one can grief and looting. I even get to bottom an Archimeba. Yeah, I'll keep this and send an Archimeba to the bottom. You never want to see an Archimeba in the hand, but I have one. Oh, come on. Eldrazi Temple. Apparently, we both think it's 2012. Chalice on one. Okay. Good news. We can never win. Uh, I guess I can just take two turns to go to... Ugh. This is where Unmask would actually be way better than Grief. If I could unmask my Golgari Grave Troll and make something happen here. That's a really bad Chalice for me, though. What's my plan here? Uh, All of my setups are one... There is no way to get a card in the graveyard that doesn't cost one, so I guess I'm just passing my turn and going to discard. If they thought not seer me here, I might just concede, because them having the information that I'm dredge is worth a lot. Do I think I'm going to beat Urza Saga on a slow dredge anyway? Like, I could just concede here and hide the information, let them think I'm Storm. I'm just looking at this deck again. Wow, Chalice is bad. 
if I didn't mulligan and I had discarded Grave Troll on the first turn, dredged this turn, then maybe there's something. Okay, I'm just going for it. I don't want to just concede without playing a card in the first game here. If this Urza Saga has anything in it that could uh, mess with graveyards, I'm in trouble. This is the Thought Not Seer turn, if that's what they have. All right, let's just hope for a good dredge here. Dredging Grave Troll hit Icarid and a Golgari Thug. There's a Grief. I could Grief them now. I do have Thug to keep dredging. Yeah, I think I want to check this hand. Oh, three lands. Cool. All right, <laughs> we're just going to die to a solo. Urza Saga here. Just make a construct, make a construct, tutor up a, a graveyard thing. The constructs are gonna outmuscle my Icarids anyway. Wow, that was devastating. Like, play draw. I think we just tear this game up on the play if I get this Faithless Looting off, but on the draw, we're just dead instead. Gross. Okay, Shadow Spear is not Soul Guide Lantern. It's still bad for me, but we are still playing the game, kinda. Taking six lifelink. Yeah, that's going to be tough to come back from. I don't think I'm doing Icarid this turn because it just doesn't do anything. Like, it, it just runs into my 5-5. Five five. Now that there's a, a bridge in the graveyard, Icarid actually does do something. Uh, time to start casting thugs. Never where you want to be, but it's where I am. There is a stink weed imp in the graveyard. For additional dredging. Thug is not optional. When it dies, put target creature from your graveyard on top of your library. There's no Narc Amoeba. Normally Thug is good at recycling Narc Amoebas in this mid-game situation, but I don't have one of those. I'm going to block the six. The one without Trample, of course. I'm going to put the Thug. It's or I guess Grief. Doesn't matter. I'll put the Thug itself back on top. Stink weed up dredges for more than that. Oriox salvagers. Oh, we're going this is a bomber deck as well. Okay. Uh Icarid is coming in this turn. Dredging Stink Weed Imp. A Cephalo Coliseum was my one way forward in this game, which I'm not able to draw here. I hit a second bridge, so I could cast Narc Amoeba. I can Cabal Therapy, making two things. Yeah, I'm just dead to the Shadow Spear anyway. Okay, party's over. Imagine all of that, but if I had Faithless Looting on turn one instead of passing to both of my first two turns just to go to discard. Yep, rough stuff. And now they know what I'm doing for the, the sideboard games. Nature's Claim awkwardly does not line up at all against Chalice of the Void, which is the problem here. Elish Norn and Iona don't seem like solutions. Leyline can mess up their... Um, bomber loop, but I don't think that's where the type of game I need to play. What is less good here? I'm. It's awkward because I want to shave one drops, but I also like recognize that the one drops are what get the game off the ground for me. I think on the play, I have to leave in basically all of these or most. Like, I gotta make room for three things. Breakthrough I can cast for two mana. So, Otherworldly Gaze, Otherworldly Gaze, and I think Grief is important. I think Ox and Hogak are important. That's, like, how I can actually win a game. Maybe a Faithless Looting? God, these ones. So hard. Can I shave a Thug? Do you ever shave a Dredger? Thug also casts Hogak, which is, like, one of my paths out of this game. Therapy is pretty important. Just as an enabler, even if it gets countered. Okay, I'm shaving a thug. Yell at me in the comments. Here we go. This build, by the way, doesn't have Lion's Eye Diamond in it, just because Ewan sold off Lion's Eye Diamonds that they owned. There are plenty of dredge lists without it. It's not, like, strictly worse. It's just a different type of thing. Okay, uh, I'm going to keep this. On the strength of Cabal Therapy, naming Chalice the Void. All right, they have the ley line. Welcome to the dredge life. It's really tough when your opponent gets the game one off you. Naming Chalice of the Void because my hand absolutely doesn't function. Thought not seer. 
Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and a couple of Ancient Tombs. Okay. Another therapy. I could hit this uh, Thought Not Seer right now. And the reason I would do that is because if I Faithless Looting into my three of Nature's Claim, the Thought Not Seer can just take it next turn. Yeah, I'm going to therapy the Thought Not Seer. Get rid of that. They've picked up a city of traitors in the meantime. There's the saga, unfortunately. Saga's so good. Right, I'm going to use Cephalid Coliseum to careful study. That leaves up green if I spike. Uh, get rid of grief and, I guess, one of the lootings. Or I'm going to get rid of grief and Icarid. I guess I should looting now. I think we'd imp an ox. All right, we're having the full dredge experience here. Normally, you would have easily won game one, and we're like, okay, we're losing to Leyline, but at least we know what we need to play against now, and that's not what's happening. Oh, Ice Cold. My only out to Leyline is a one drop, and this Urza Saga is about to become unraceable. Tough beat to start this out, but uh, like I said... There's a reason Dredge isn't super popular anymore, and it's because main deck tools are just better than they used to be. Cards like Urza Saga having Graveyard Hate in the package if you want it, Endurance in the format, Force of Negation to back up Force of Will out of blue decks. Like, There's a lot of reasons why Dredge isn't as popular as it used to be, but this matchup in particular seems really tough, especially when you lose the die roll. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, Check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop and be sure to use the code BOSTONROLL for 10% off when you check out. I am on the play for round two against a Yorian strategy. Usually death and taxes, but uh, I've been betrayed before. I'm going to mulligan this no lander, no action hand. Uh, this one I'm into. I'm going to keep this and put Narcomoeba back in the deck where it belongs. Keep bottom the Narco. And let's do this thing. I'm going to careful study and discard two dredgers. Ooh, double grave troll. Let's go. The cool thing about this is if they are death and taxes, their best plan to slow me down is wasteland. But if I have another land, they're dead. And even if I don't, dredging gets me going here. And if they don't wasteland me, I get to faithless looting my entire life into play. All right. Death and taxes, it is. We're going to just go as hard as possible. Dredging Grave Troll. That hit a second Grave Troll, but no, like, real payoffs. Faithless Looting. Let's go. Really wish that was Breakthrough. Their deck could have Solitude in it, which is a way that they could blow up my bridges at instant speed. Just shouting that out. Okay, it looks like I've hit no Narc Amoebas. There is a... There's a bridge, a Therapy... Hogak is there. I think I'm just dumping these these uh, grave trolls again. Yeah, that was that didn't really go very far, all things considered. We knew one Narcomy was on the bottom of the deck, so it's hard to complain about that. But uh, 26 cards without one of the other three. All right, deck. Let's make this happen. Bridging grave troll. Still no Narcomibas. I'm quitting. I'm quitting. It's over. All right, uh, Cabal Therapy, what do I want to name with Therapy? It's probably, Ace cost two to flashback, no love there. The Recruiter of the Guard, like they haven't done anything yet. I could name Solitude just to make sure that my bridges don't get nuked. I feel like Thalia would be in play already if they had it. Oh, this fetch land is weird. This feels like a red build. Stoneforge Mystic, be tough. Stoneforge Mystic for Lion Sash is pretty annoying, and they probably would have not sequenced it in that order. I think I'm going to name Recruiter the Guard. It just seems like the three mana play that they wouldn't have made yet. All right, let's see. Oh, wow. Their hand is five lands and true name Nemesis. That's embarrassing <laughs> that my deck is failing in the face of this zero resistance right now including three caracuses what is going on right now and the the twisted part is that field of ruin is actually just strip mine because my deck doesn't play basics 
All right, is, are we going to see true name here? Or did they rip recruiter of the guard right after I checked for it? Okay. Well, let's uh, hit some Narc Amoebas. All right, we got Icarids now. So this is probably going to happen. Let's start doing stuff. Icarid can exile Grief and Golgari Thug. They have three Caracuses, so this Hogak is not going to do much. But it might be like kind of a free roll to do, depending on what else comes up. Still no Narcomibas in the mix. We have what is in the mix? One bridge from below. Oh, this is tough. Just really no dice anywhere. And I could put Hogak into play and make them tap their Caracas, but that seems super low impact. I could just attack for three, make a zombie. Think of all therapy, make another zombie. Yeah, I'm just going to attack. The anemic beats here. We are uh, 38 cards into the deck with zero Narcomibas and only one bridge. Good shit all around. Ball therapy, my opponent sacking the Icarid because it's going to die anyway. Let's have a peek. I feel like they would have put in Stoneforge Mystic already. There's only one mystery card over there. I'll name Swords to Plowshares. It's a thing that wouldn't have had a target this turn. And. Oh god, Palace Jailer. Okay. That's actually not great for them. And I can't do anything with my one mana. I could just cast Hogak here. Oh, I could cast Hogak and then Cabal Therapy, the Palace Jailer. Yeah, that works. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, seven. There's Hogak. And then this gives me an extra zombie and gets the Palace Jailer out of the mix. While ignoring Caracas, plus Jailer, get it out. Do I have a Dredger in my graveyard? Uh-oh. I might need to uh, Cabal Therapy myself here. Maybe I didn't care about Palace Jailer. Whoops. Yeah, I need to get my Grave Trolls back in my graveyard, where they are helpful. If I had a second bridge, I would have been going wide, could have recast Hogak to Therapy again. Yeah, I have to Therapy myself. Ugly. Golgari Grave Troll. Put three of those into the graveyard. Okay. Off we go again. Field of Ruin. That uh, is Strip Mine. In fact, it's better than Strip Mine because they get a, a land out of it. No attacks from True Name. Three Icarid Triggers. Do I have three black creatures to exile? The Grief's a freebie. An Icarid could eat Icarid. I think that's fine. I can do that to do that once or i could get rid of the hogak because of all those caracuses all right i'm done with hogak this game and the third icarid's gonna have to just stay hungry i think icarid's my best chance to do anything here there's all three remaining narc amoebas let's go yes i would use the ability get him in get him in get him in oh what was the draw oh it's yeah fine yeah i don't have any of those uh, the cards left in my deck are uh, two Bridge from Belows, one Narc Amoeba, one Land. Okay, got it. And I'm going to Cabal Therapy my opponent. Oh, wait, am I going to do that? No, I'm just going to attack first. Because I can sack the Icarid, keep the Narc Amoebas. Every point of damage is going to matter here. I get two Zombies now. And Cabal Therapy, sacking Icarid. What would they have that they wouldn't have cast that I also care about? Solitude, maybe? I don't know. I'm running out of cards that I could actually care about. Yeah, it's just a bunch of lands over there. Okay, my deck failed pretty hard here, but also so did theirs. So they're now at eight facing down a, a zombie army. Okay, I played some pretty ugly magic there, but they barely played magic at all, and uh, I win that fight, apparently. Okay, uh, Nature's Claim, get in. I'm just going to bring that in 100% of the time, especially when I don't know what they're going to have. Is Gaze better than Careful Study? I think it might be. Like, if I'm going to cut one thing, I think Gaze is worse, though... So, I, once again, we're in this spot that I'm going to have to figure out if I'm going to play three and a half more rounds with this of what my sideboard plan actually is, because careful study is pretty important. 
to getting things going without Lion's Eye Diamond in the deck. Maybe Grief is cuttable, or I could cut the Hogak against this deck with three or more Caracas in it. The Hogak did give me a pretty cool line of just kind of machine gunning Cabal Therapies and building out the zombie army. Like, it is cool that that exists, but yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to be off that and let's play it like this uh this hand could just go to discard but i don't really want to play that kind of game i'm gonna mulligan okay i have nature's claim and i can put an Archimedes on the bottom like this hand needs some work but i think having the nature's claim ready to go is important my opponent's mulling to four so far maybe beyond okay they're on four but not no ley line involved. How about a uh, nope, no love. Okay, let's hope they just jam rest in peace this turn, and then I untap and draw some powerful enabler. Good deck, help me out here. Wall therapy. I can therapy me or therapy them. If I therapy me, my graveyard will be full of grave trolls. I could therapy them, naming surgical extraction, which seems likely to be the card that they have if they have anything. I'm gonna do that. We're fetching in response. Just flustering this. Uh oh, what's going on here? Containment priest. Well, I did not bring in my uh, firestorms, so that one's a problem. I'm gonna name surgical. See what else is in that hand. Towards the plowshares. Okay. So how do I win a game against surgical or containment priest without firestorm in my deck? I don't think that I can. This is why it's important to win game one. <laughs> so you know what kind of hate the opponent's back in. Your name Nemesis. Okay. I'm going to draw another card. Pretend I can still play this game. Um, Do I need to even keep playing this? No, I don't think so. Yeah, like, they're attacking me for five a turn and I can't do anything. Like, there's crazy worlds where it's like, past thug beatdown. Like, Narc Amoeba and Golgari thug, two mana, one, one beatdown is like always plan F that's available in Dredge, but yikes. I was not going to get there through a true name nemesis. Okay, Firestorm is now in the mix as a, as a tool that I have. I suspect they don't have ley lines now. They're probably a surgical and counterspell and creature deck. They're also probably a Stoneforge Mystic deck, so Nature's Claim isn't textless regardless grief's really good against this kind of deck i guess now we're in the space of do i decide they are not a leyline deck because of the things i have seen or do i respect both can this deck afford to respect both my discard is my most potent interaction anyway i think i'm gonna shave a thug to the rest of this intact Icarid just seems really important, but Icarid doesn't matter if I'm not dredging and any hate card hits Icarid, but Thug is castable sometimes. Okay, let's try this. This hand sucks. I'm going to mulligan it. It just doesn't do anything. This hand is great. I'm going to keep it and put Mana Confluence on the bottom. All right. Please don't have a ley line. No! <laughs> uh, this is... Horseshit. We had the grief, check your hand, looting, sets up uh, Stinkweed Imp, and the... Oh my god. There's only one out to this in the deck. Uh, I hate life. I guess I should just grief anyway. Because uh, I need to know what's going on over there. I'm going to pitch Stinkweed Imp. If they kept like a terrible hand on the strength of Leyline, maybe there's a world. Oh, your hand's also just really good. I see. I see. <laughs> Sabine's Reclamation backing up this grief. Jesus. Okay. I guess they'll take Solitude. Wow, that's bad. Uh, this hand would have dunked on Surgical Extraction or Containment Priest, but instead we get nothing. Well, Gari Thug beat down. Let it begin. The twisted joke is that uh, Golgari Thug needs to attack three times to make up the damage I took to cast it. Ox of Agonis. I think it's time to loot. Uh, 
Reef and Ox can fuck off. Gaze actually has some of the most card selection possible here. I have been in the position though where I've turned zero ley line with force backup, and I know how my opponent feels right now, and they feel good. There's the apparition. If I ever get to firestorm that, it gives me a 2-2. Two -two. That's exciting. Okay, all of these cards can be gone. Graveyard, 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 because none of them help. And I'm going to gaze in my upkeep as well to see as many cards as quickly as possible. Narcomoeba, Thug, Mine. Get rid of all of those. Did not hit. This is why... In deck building, it's important to diversify your hate. Like we saw Containment Priest last game, we made a plan that beats Containment Priest. We kept a hand that beats Containment Priest, and then they're just like, I also have Leyline, by the way. Um, I'm going to save Cabal Therapy. If I ever find my Nature's Claim, I want to clear their hand of Force of Will before I make my move on that. But I'm going to be dead to this. Apparition way before that, because all my stuff requires taking damage to cast because of the mana base. We're not really meant to play these grindy games. Oh, all right, literally dead. I cannot answer two of those. So far, a pretty tough run here. I wonder if a dredge expert would have just brought in firestorms and ley line or and nature's claims every game two just to cover all bases and like sort of dial in for game three is that just what i'm supposed to be doing i might adopt that posture if it's not clear what my opponent's going to be doing after this i might be uh i might be getting a little deeper into the sideboard moving forward on to the next one we're a few rounds into the video thanks for sticking with me Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the play for round number three, and I think I want to lead on Cabal Therapy. I'm keeping this hand. I think if I Therapy Force of Will, and then... Careful Study Breakthrough on turn two. That's that's a line. I might be getting too controlling here, but I want to make sure my spells resolve. Naming Force of Will. We got there, fam. Two Ponders and a Stoneforge. What's up with these blue Stoneforge decks? <laughs> I literally said in the deck tech, it's like blue Stoneforge decks that aren't quite good enough anymore. <laughs> and uh, my opponent's... Did not get the memo, but neither did I, so it's cool. All right, highly interested in finding a dredger in my top three cards here. They shuffled the deck. Come on, dredge card. Cephalid Coliseum, cast careful study. And no! All right, Hogak and uh, I think Grief can go in the graveyard. And then I'm going to Cabal Therapy again. I think I want to take the Ponder. I want to take a sure thing. Oh, would have hit two Stoneforge Mystics if I went for that, but still, that's not the card I'm worried about. Jace, two Flooded Strands. Okay. I need this Faithless Looting to deliver. I'm ready to shred. I just need, need the help to get there. Come on, deck. All right, let's see if you play a Lion Sash in your deck. Is that worth main deck slot? Or are we getting like batter skull cauldra? All right, cauldra it is. The race is on. How about a creature with dredge? There's a creature with dredge. We did it, Bezos. Okay, faithless looting. Two creatures with dredge. You don't say. And I could cephalid coliseum here, which sees one fewer card than breakthrough does, but I get, but it's uncounterable. Yeah, I'm gonna go for coliseum. Target player draws three, discards three. That'll be me, please. Grave Troll. Stinkweed Imp. And Stinkweed Imp. We hit two Narcomoebas. Discard the three Dredgers again. Narcomoeba, get in. Narcomoeba, get in. Now let's assess the damage here. There is a Bridge from Below. Two Cabal... Th three Cabal Therapies. All right, I put two of them there myself. All right, let's therapy that... That, uh... 
I think I'm going to start with Jace, actually. Jace, the mines, or wait, they'll be dead way before Jace matters. I could name Stoneforge Mystic first. Stoneforge Mystic. Ooh, Snapcaster Mage. I'm a little worried about that. Am I, though? Four cards in hand. I can Cabal Therapy again. Take the Cauldra. I think Cauldra is still the, the worst thing that's going on over there for me. Name Cauldra Complete. Take the Cauldra. Got Snapcaster Jace Land. I'm definitely playing Hogak here. I'm just deciding if I'm also Cabal Therapying with the Hogak. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm leaving black creatures, dredge cards, and cards with flashback in my graveyard. That like seems pretty obvious, but just wanna say it out loud. Yeah, falling a um a bridge short of really going off here. But I have Icarid next turn. Am I worried about Snap Ponder right now? I don't think that I am. Though Snapcaster Mage could die and mess up my bridges. Nah, I'm just going to let Hogak chill and try to have a bigger next turn. There's the Flooded Strand. Did you draw to Fairy? Right, that's a little annoying, but still fine. Like It saves them from taking 8 Trample, but doesn't really stop anything I'm doing. Okay. Icarid is coming back, exiling Grief. Then I'm going to Dredge Grave Troll in my draw step. Get another Narc Amoeba. Yes, bring it into play. And have I found another bridge yet? I have not. I think sticking to the uncounterable Coliseums is still better than going for the breakthrough. Target myself. Grave Troll. Think we didn't. And another Grave Troll. There are eight cards left in my deck. Discard Hogak. Grave Troll and Stinkweed Imp. I'm discarding Stinkweed Imp for black creatures for Icarid. Let's get this graveyard up here. We can work with it. One, two, three, four Bridge from Blows. Two Cabal Therapies. Yeah, this should be enough. Therapy my opponent. Sacking the Icarid. I'm not going to attack into this Stoneforge Mystic because then I lose all my bridges. Now, Caster Mage, get out of here. And then I can cast Hogak, exiling one, two, three, four, five things. And I'm going to Cabal Therapy using Hogak because I could just easily recast it now. Just free money. Jace, the Mind Sculptor, get rid of that, and then replay Hogak. All right, opponent conceded. Cool. I probably would have attacked to clear Teferi, lose my bridges, but just pass the turn with overwhelming advantage at the end of this turn. Like, them functionally hellbent. No planeswalker, no creature against all this. But they see the writing on the wall. Finally, that was a completely messed up dredge game one. We'll take that. I'm going to try the thing I said where I just go in on all of my sideboard cards. But I had trouble finding three cuts in previous rounds. Finding... uh. Six here is probably going to be a challenge. Beating up on the one drops, but like those are also really important. It's like Ox doesn't function if my graveyard doesn't function. Like maybe that's the way to think about it. Like Ox and Icarid, while they are very good, they don't, these cards don't do anything at all if you don't have a functioning like dredge up and running. So maybe that's how you make the argument. Uh, four might be too many griefs. I don't know. Um, I don't think I can touch the one drops or the lands anymore. Find two more spots. Is it like a thug and a grief? Can that possibly be right? It seems reasonable. Like Hogak is really good at doing what Hogak does. Breakthrough is one of the most powerful cards in the deck. All right, I'm going for this smattering of whatever and bringing in all six interaction pieces in the sideboard. Just saying, if those were Chain of Vapors, I wouldn't have to decide between what I want to destroy and Chain of Vapor. I, I mean, Containment Priest specifically in round two has Flash, so Chain of Vapor, not a great answer to it. But I don't have to pick between, like, Leyline or, or a creature. I'm going to mulligan this one. 
It has the two counter pieces in it, but doesn't do anything. Uh, this one also doesn't do anything. I don't think I can keep a hand that just doesn't function. Uh, this one... Yeah, this one can see cards and do stuff. All right, I'm going to keep this and put Ogak and Thug. Or Thug is better in my hand and Imp's better in my deck. Okay, I'm going to try it like this. I'm going to, with a Ponder, they mold to six. They did not shuffle the Ponder. I don't like it. I think I want to gaze here rather than break through. And I think I want to do it now, so something like Flusterstorm or Spell Pierce don't get to, to find a home. Uh, Narcomoeba in the graveyard. Gaze in the graveyard. I actually kind of want this land on top. I at least have a Narcomoeba for my troubles. Didn't get surgical. That's a start. Are we just slamming Rest in Peace? Are we... Alright, no Rest in Peace, no... Um, and Damon Priest this turn. Could still be holding up surgicals. Could just have a grip full of forces and waiting for a good target. Uh, I, I could just flashback gazes. I think that's how I want to play this game. Like they're not showing me hard hate, but they are showing me like soft blue permission. And surgical doesn't work against otherworldly gaze right now because I can just flash it back if they target it. Maybe I was supposed to gaze main phase in case I hit Cabal Therapy. Yeah, that probably makes sense. Timeless Dragon on the cycle. Okay. Basic Planes is what was found with that. I'm just going to gaze in the end step. If this hits like Cabal Therapy and a Dredger, and I can clear the way for Breakthrough, that's a way through this game. Right, it did hit Cabal Therapy and Icarid and... Um, I actually want to leave Faithless Looting on top. Okay. Uh, there is a line here if my opponent lets me have it. No love for Icarid here. Okay. I'm going to Cabal Therapy Force of Will up front. Surgicaling my Icarids in response. Yeah, that's... It's fine. I'm glad that sniffed out now and not later. I name Force of Will here. Hope they don't have Force of Negation. Okay, they forced Pitching Spell Pierce. Okay, I mean, I'm just going to go for it. This is the best chance I'm going to get. Faithless Looting. Discard Grave Troll and Imp. But spiking that Grave Troll is insane. Even get a land drop for the turn. And I'm going to break through for zero. I'll just leave the mana up. I'm not planning on having cards in my hand at the end of this. Force blue card was the last remaining business. Okay. They are hellbent over there. I can faithless looting next turn. I can dredge. I got stuff going on. They got a rip here. I was right on my read that they were holding up soft permission and surgical though. And they're going to eternalize timeless dragon just to do something here. I'm going to dredge this grave troll. Try to get it going. Narc amoeba. There is a bridge in there and hogak. Uh, it's time to flashback looting. Faithless looting. Brave troll. And stinkweed imp. Discard the two trolls. Let's assess the graveyard. One bridge. One therapy. Uh, with a second therapy, I could get Hogak in. I'm going to have to spend another turn developing here, though. I can also cast stinkweed imp to get in front of this 4 4 if that becomes the play. I'm not going to block with Narcomy, but not yet. Okay, uh, in my upkeep, I think this is where I cast... Oh, no, I have another looting in my graveyard. I'm just going to use looting rather than mess around with the, the otherworldly gazes. How have we done? Still only one bridge. Hurts. Flashback looting. Hope you didn't draw Force of Negation or Spell Pierce. Oh, no. That sucks. Uh, but okay. I mean, whatever. I'll just block with an Archimeba this turn and get a zombie out of it. They're still not doing great over there. I am going to attack with one of my Narcomoebas. If they draw Prismatic Ending or Swords to Plowshares to clear the other one and attack for three, I'm not even dead to that. It's fine. I'm going to have to win this game by attacking with creatures, so I'll start doing that. There is another looting in my graveyard. 
Napcaster Mage is devastating. Obviously, something like Rest in Peace is, is lights out, but Napcaster Mage would be really annoying. Hope they just draw nothing. I believe it is blocking time. With my lands being as painful as they are. Surgical Extraction. Okay, yeah. Pretty good draw, I gotta say. Can I win this game anymore? Now I don't have bridges, and uh, I have to cast this Stinkweed Imp and beat down. Uh, that was a really annoying draw. Am I even dredging at this point? What am I trying to hit? Uh, I have one more Narc Amoeba in the deck. I think if I dredge any more, I will lose the game before I can even cast any spells. Uh, okay. Um, or I'll lose the... I, I will deck before I can win a race. Even if they just don't do anything for the rest of the game. And Narc Amoeba get in there. I can cast, uh, I guess I can basically never cast anything if they leave this Timeless Dragon in play. Okay, we're just taking draw steps. A Flood Coliseum. All of these lands hurt me. If I play the other Stinkweed Imp, that does let me attack with the first one. Okay. I'm at two. Oh, I can cast Hogak this turn. By tapping my imps, leaving back Narcomoeba to block, and just hope it holds up. Yeah, that's what I have to do here. Okay, here's Gak. And if they can remove Narcomoeba in any way, I'm dead. If Hogak starts turning sideways, I'm actually doing pretty good. Ponder is terrifying. Pyroblast Swords to Plowshares win the game. Napcaster Mage does not win the game. Prismatic Ending wins the game. They chose to shuffle. It's good news. One card in hand. And they conceded one of Hogak carrying the day. That was a sick game. Fun little grind. That's the difference between a hard out like ley line that we've run into the last couple matches and even just like force, force, two surgicals and force of negation. They did five things that game and I still was able to grind it out. Yeah, soft hate versus hard hate. Ooh, big difference. That one felt good. On to the next one. On the play in round four, no mana or ability to do anything here. Uh, this one, once again, this is a hand where Unmask would be a lot better than, than Grief. But I am going to keep this hand. I'm going to put Narc Amoeba on the bottom of my deck. I'm going to Grief my opponent and then break through. I think that's my plan. The opponent mold of five. Getting combo vibes over there. All right, Grief pitching Grief. Let's go. I want the thug in my graveyard off the breakthrough. What are you doing, opponent? Hexmage Inquisition. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that Inquisition. Uh, they do have a turn three Merit Lage, though. Gotta watch out for that. Yeah, this is just going to be a, a race to the bottom. Breakthrough, let's go. And discard six cards. I choose these six. Didn't hit a second Dredger, so I'm still in on thug here. The Inquisition's dead, but we're on like a one, two, three, get out of here situation. Lotus Petal. That doesn't change the clock. Uh, I'm going to hold off on Icarid. I would like to find a bridge. All right, I found a bridge and multiple black creatures, so Icarid's much better next turn. But slow dredging against the deck with a turn three goldfish is pretty bad. Now I hope they do Inquisition me. And this is a deck that very well might have crop rotation for Bajuka Bog available in the main deck. I don't know if they're mono black or if they're green black and just had a mono black opener. Well, they just made green mana. Okay, green confirmed. They're going to get Bajuka Bog here and just Shadow Realm me. Okay. I guess I have to take a draw step. Something like Breakthrough could get me back in this. Black Green Depths is a horrible matchup for any graveyard deck for this reason. Just the main deck Bajuka Bog is. Is horrendous. Okay, uh, gaze in the graveyard. Oh, this Coliseum would have been great like a turn ago. Now it's way too late. If I draw looting next turn, like if I just put gaze in the graveyard, draw looting, loot, discard, Golgari, Thug, and whatever the next card down is, then I have Cephalid Coliseum. I think that's the line. Okay. I'm gonna keep these two on top, Coliseum on top with looting above it. Going for Bog did slow them down a turn. 
There's the depths. If they if their one mystery card is Spirit Guide, I've lost for sure. Faithless Looting. I discard Thug and Grave Troll. Yeah, those are good discards. Play Coliseum. And here we go. Can I get in front of a 2020 for long enough to win this game? Oh, you had the Spirit Guide. Are you shitting me? Ah, uh, fucking whatever. That was so close. We actually managed to thread the needle against a, a natural game one bajuka bog. Went from nothing, started from the bottom, now we're here, and your one draw, your one mystery card was the spirit guide. I hate my life. I'm quitting magic. <laughs> that was a sick game. Um, okay. How do I combat this strategy? Probably... I mean, discard's going to be really important. Ripping apart crop rotations and access to Bajuka Bog is step number one. And I think the Dredge 24 that I was looking at on my next turn would have produced an Arkham but a Chump Merit Lage for a turn, and then we can win on the next turn or two. Like, I think we were actually in position that game if they didn't have exactly that. But they did, so whatever. Um, Elish Norn and Iona aren't great. Those don't really impact what this particular opponent is doing i want the nature's claims uh black green and firestorm can take out a uh elvish reclaimer which actually is a scary card we can't really do anything with elvish reclaimer in play so icarid or do i just want to go fast like with my all right i'm not doing firestorm I think Ox is too slow for the matchup. Just weird to say because that card is explosive as hell, but it's also like kind of grindy because you it takes eight cards in the graveyard to work, and then you need red red, which not all of your lands create red, and you don't have many lands, and one of the lands that makes red dies when you use it three times. It's a big ask. All right, I think I want all my one drops just maximized for speed. I want all my discard maximized for disruption. And I don't, maybe this is not a Hogak matchup either. Okay, I'm going to try it like this. On the play, I have a setup and a discard spell. And yeah, I'm going to keep this. I can't cast my Nature's Claim, but it is at least here. It is present. It gives me a chance to dig. Play line confirmed. Okay. I believe, do I grief now or do I hold on? I think I want to grief now, pitching Icarid probably, or is it Grave Troll, or Thug, not Grave Troll. Um, all th maybe it's just therapy. All right, I'm gonna grief. They are also a combo deck, and I want to respect that. Two Hex Mages. Okay, Hex Mage is super annoying because it can sacrifice whenever it wants to destroy bridges. Okay, let's see where this goes. And a confluence is in play now. All right, show me a green source. Okay, we did get there on the green source. I don't have any way to move this game forward after that happens, though. I think I have to exile these two other cards. Put gemstone mine on top of the deck play the mine and pass and hope to find some way to set up next turn. They are a discard deck, so I don't want to just jam thug here and try to be mana efficient in the face of getting my eight card discarded. There's Hex Mage. Got it. Nature's Claim. The Ley Line. Faithless Looting. I mean, there it is. Faithless Looting. Let's go. Oh, baby. Uh, discard Thug and Icarid, and then it's time to break through. They can nuke the bridges at any time, but I have to at least put that pressure on them to do it. Thug. Imp. Roll. Imp. Discard. Icarid. Grave Troll. And Stinkweed Imp. Oh, I have to discard four cards? It wasn't that a breakthrough. Why did I get to keep any? Hold up. Draw four cards, then choose X cards in your hand to discard the rest. Did I just lose track of what's going on? Why did I get to keep any of these cards? I didn't put an extra man into breakthrough. Okay. Uh, let's look at this situation. There is a bridge here. 
I'm gonna therapy at least once. Like, let's get a bridge going here. See if we can flush out. Yeah, that's perfect. It only got one. Oh, okay. They and they actually had a, a target for for hex mage. I didn't even think of the gemstone mine. That was sick. All right. Uh, I want crop rotation out of the hand if it's there. So spirit guide. God damn it. <laughs> oh no! I just chose incorrectly. Now they can Sylvan Scrying and Vajuka Bog me. I have no way to get a second creature into play for the second therapy. Unreal. I mean, I will say, my opponent's deck is well suited to mess me up. But also, like, we saw the lines where we put them to the test on their piece of interaction. Then we. Uh, in last game, we actually, like, we're going to beat the Merit Lage, but then they just also had Spirit Guide to make it happen a turn early. Like, we've done some cool things this game. It, my opponent just had it, and that's magic. Sometimes they have it. Uh, Gemstone Mine just doesn't work. Okay. We're dead. I'm good. Yeah, there was, like, a 50-50 on Crop Rotation or Sylvan Scrying, but Crop Rotation is the scarier card because it's an instant, but they just, you know, they were set up far enough where it didn't matter anymore. On to the last round. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop, and be sure to use the code Boston Roll for 10% off when you check out. I am on the play for round number five, the final round. It's been a tough run so far. I'm keeping this hand, I just have to figure out how to use it. Like, I can grief on turn one and then break through. Or I could grief turn one. All right, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to grief right away. And then I'll decide if I want to map out a two-turn Cephalid Coliseum line or just whip my graveyard or my hand into my graveyard right now. What do you got over there? Ooh, okay. We are playing against Storm. I think I want this Wish Claw Talisman out of here. And like I could cast the breakthrough off of. All right, I'm taking the Wish Claw Talisman and then I'm going to play City of Brass and pass the turn. I want to break through for one and then chuck my whole graveyard in on turn three rather than slow dredging and trying to keep up. Alliance Eye Diamond just like flips this all around anyway. Here's the Ponder. And of course, if I draw just like Faithless Looting or Careful Study, I get to break through and do everything now. That did not happen, so it's time to break through. I want to keep one card in my hand, and I'm going to keep the Careful Study. Do I need to keep Careful Study, or do I want the land? Does it matter? All right. I'll keep Careful Study in my hand. I'm ready to... Rip and Ravage next turn, if I get a next turn. Against Storm, there are no promises. Echo of Eons also functions as Graveyard Hate, so might not matter. Okay, looks like we're getting a turn here. Is there a reason to Cephala Coliseum now versus in my main phase? With this many... Or do Coliseuming now guarantees that I get Grave Troll twice this turn. All right. I'm going to do it now. Coliseum myself right now. Grave Troll. Imp. And Thug. Okay. Uh, I did end up hitting more dredgers anyway, but doing that in the upkeep guarantees that I get to dredge again this turn. Where if I somehow just like... No, I guess... No, that doesn't matter much. All right. I take it all back. I'm just saying random words. Okay, we got one bridge and one therapy. Definitely therapying. We know Echo's in the hand. It sucks that this is also a Bill of Summer in the main deck. deck. All right, therapy you. Narc Amoeba. If this resolves, I'm going to name Burning Wish. Yeah, Bill of Summer. Easy game. Okay. Got me. And... I have to pass the turn this time. One of us is dead this turn. I have the careful study. I get to like 
go completely insane next turn. If I get a next turn. Oh, there's Lion's Eye Diamond. So we know Echo is at least going to happen here. Dark Ritual. And these Motor Leagues are tough. Combo decks are just faster than you. Your discard. Like, I discarded a tutor on turn one and did all that on turn three. And it just is not going to matter. Ad nauseum. They're just like, I don't even need this Echo, thank you. But it's there if I want it. Lotus Petal, LED Lotus Petal. Ripping off the Ad nauseum. Easy game. Uh, there's a Burning Wish. That should be enough. Because, yeah. As long as Storm is enough, which they should be able to figure out. Oh, there's just Natty Tendrils. Yep, okay. Dark Ritual. All right, all right, I believe you. Well, there's that. We're getting a really good picture of why Dredge is not popular anymore. The combo decks are faster. The control decks are more interactive. Finally, we have an Iona matchup, though. Don't know if it's even going to be good, but we have it. And Nature's Claim. I don't actually expect Graveyard Hate out of this deck. But Nature's Claim can mess up their uh, defense grids and which call it talismans and, and that sort of thing. I think Hogak's going to be too slow here. Ox of Agona's too slow. Maybe I just don't Nature's Claim, though. Is that possible? And if they just, like, float a uh, which call it talisman in play, that's annoying. Yeah, Epic Storm does not play any sort of graveyard hate. They're just trying to go faster than you and tempo you with Veil of Summers. So I'm going to go with the Iona, and I want the, the discard because it's important on turn one to buy the time. Maybe I'll cut an Icarid. I mean, but Icarid feeds Dread Return. That sounds important. I want my Dredgers. Maybe it's just Careful Study. Sorry, Careful Study. Okay. Here we go. This is what I'm doing. This is where I get leylined out of this preposterous stock non-stock list. Who knows? We'll see. Okay. Uh, multiple therapies here. And a reasonable setup. All right. I'm going to keep this. I'm just going to lead on a therapy. Do I name Veil of Summer just to clear the way for the other therapies? Or do I name Dark Ritual to try to slow them down? Uh, Lion's Eye Diamond. I'm going to name Lion's Eye Diamond. Their most busted hands involve that. All right, yep. Kept this on the strength. That was actually their only mana source. They kept LED Echo with no other way to do anything. All right, let's hope that is just a hard punish. Don't rip an LED. Against combo decks in general, I love naming Lion's Eye Diamond off of uh, Cabal Therapy in the blind because all of the most broken hands start with that card. Okay, this uh, Faithless Looting changes what I was going to do this turn. I was going to probably cast Narc Amoeba and then Flashback Therapy, or... Yeah, Thug puts itself back in the deck. Yeah, so now I get to actually do stuff, though. Faithless Looting. Put Stinkweed Imp and Bulgari Thug in the graveyard. I'm going to Faithless Looting again. Setting up a huge Cephala Coliseum for next turn. Stinkweed Imp. And Golgari Grave Troll. Found an Archimeba. Discarding Imp and Troll. An Archimeba in play. Did I hit any bridges? There is a bridge. I get to Therapy. I'm probably going to take the Dark Ritual. If you're just like really not doing anything, uh, I'm going to keep beating up on the mana here. Dark Ritual. They found a Chrome Mox. Okay. Still worried about them spiking Lion's Eye Diamond this turn. But other than that, I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. I guess I could have therapied with the zombie on the other one, but I forgot. Forget about it. <laughs> Let's party. Dredging Grave Troll. I found another bridge. I could therapy first. Does that matter? Now let's see where this goes. I'm going to Coliseum and Coliseum myself. Draw three, discard three, Grave Troll. Grave Troll. And Stinkweed Imp. Guard Imp, Troll, Troll. Two Narc Amoebas here. Narc Amoeba, Narc Amoeba. Let's assess the graveyard. Dread Return is present. Both Dread Returns, no Iona. I have one, two, three, all four bridges. Okay, uh, that, that's a party. 
I'm going to Cabal Therapy from hand first. Name Chrome Mox. Keep beating up that mana. They found another Dark Ritual. Okay. Uh, how many therapies do I have? Two. So I'm going to Therapy, attacking Narc Amoeba, getting four zombies. I'm going to name Chain of Vapor. My goal is to put Leaf Lund to play here. I take your Chain of Vapor. Then, if I... I want to take the Dark Ritual, too. All right, fine. At least cut off your options. Dark Ritual. Shame they didn't have that last turn when I named it already. And I can attack for two right now. How big is Golgari Grave Troll? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. Grave Troll's an 11-11, and sacking three zombies to get it uh, does actually increase the power in play. I mean, they're already dead in play. Maybe I just don't need to push here. I mean, plus Icarids. And Grave Troll being hanging out in play is pretty sick, though. Uh, Burning Wish can't get anything helpful here. Wish Claw Talisman can get Lion's Eye Diamond, but you'd need so many things to happen there. Lion's Eye Diamond's really the only draw. All right, I'm going to bring back a Grave Troll. Wait, if I Dread Return Narc Amoeba and then sack Narc Amoeba, no, that's not, that does not net creatures somehow. All right. All right, put my, oh, it's a 13-13. I missed a few somewhere. I don't know. All right, it's still extra. And 13 plus 10 is plenty, so I might as well Cabal Therapy for good measure here and take the claw okay well go don't draw lines eye diamond all right we did it <laughs> now we got to get one on the draw i don't think i'm changing anything about the deck like reacting to exactly wish claw talisman with nature's claim seems like a mistake they don't have any creatures they don't have any graveyard hate all right yep they just got to operate with impunity on turn one here because they know i'm not going to do anything either Ships in the night. Odd racing. Okay, uh, this hand does not interact with my opponent. It is kind of fast. Um, I'm going to keep. Let's go. If they kind of like set back on a Veil of Summer protective hand, or if they just yeet a Echo of Eons on turn one, either way, my normal interaction isn't going to play. So I'm just going to you know, move myself forward here. I'm going to Faithless Looting instead of Careful Study, because that way they can't cantrip off Veil of Summer. What's up, Breakthrough? Discard two Dredgers and get set up with this gigantic turn two. If they kill me or Graveyard hate me this turn, good for you. But otherwise, I can Careful Study into Breakthrough next turn and just go Bananas. But the bad news about Bananas is that Veil of Summer stops most of the things that I'd want to do, unless I can get Iona into play. That's like the big difference. Okay. They have carefully left up green mana. I wonder what that's for. Wink, wink. Our Golgari Thug triggered a Narc Amoeba here. And I'm gonna careful study first. There are cards in my graveyard, or in my hand that I want in my graveyard. Or I just want to make sure that there are dredgers in my graveyard when it comes to breakthrough. Yeah, there's the veil, sure. That's the cantrip they were looking for. And gets the shields up now. Discard imp and thug. Now it's time for breakthrough to find me Iona. Breakthrough, let's go. X is zero. There are two trolls in my graveyard. One, two, right, we're doing imps now, imp, and imp, uh, discard seven cards, okay. Is breakthrough bugged? Draw four cards, then choose X cards in your hand and discard the rest. This is twice now that I've gotten to keep a card in my hand with breakthrough that I don't think I should have. That's weird. Yeah, that's not how that card's supposed to work. All right, let's look at this graveyard. Not that the card in my hand is super helpful, but like also that's just not how that's supposed to happen. Okay, I have Dread Return. I don't have Iona though. That sucks. Um, 
how many bridges do I have? One, two, three. There are three bridges here. I can Cabal Therapy myself and then Dread Return a Grave Troll and just put a big monster into play. All right, Therapy me, sacrificing a Narc Amoeba, making three friends. I'm actually just going to name a random card. I'll name plus two mace. Oh, is there a funny thing I could name here? Like, I don't want to name your already dead and then just lose the game. That's, that feels bad. Is there a funny one? Oh, uh, how about totally lost? Because <laughs> uh, that's kind of where I am. And then dread return, targeting a grave troll puts a giant creature into play. And the other dread return is in the graveyard already. Yeah, all right. I'll go with that. Okay, here's just a bunch of power and toughness. And hope I'm not dead. I'm going for the big grave troll now. My opponent, a uh, person of class and style, complimented my choice of totally lost. They suggested abandon hope, but I don't think that either of us are dead yet. Uh, I am genuinely totally lost. I've put lethal into play, and I have to pass the turn now. That veil was timely and appropriate. I did not hit the Iona. If I get comboed out here, I am dead. If I don't, I am alive. And that's that's where we've been this whole league. Chromox pitching Dark Ritual. Chromox pitching nothing. Okay, so we're building Storm. LED. All right, we're taking a spin. Is that what's going on, or is it... Burning wish time. Oh, we're just YOLO pondering. Okay, baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with uh, with Adnaz mana floating. Okay, F6. Good luck. <laughs> this is going to be sweet one way or the other. Give me a shuffle off that ponder. Ponder shuffled. Moment of truth. Did you shuffle into Ad Nauseam? Yes, yes, they missed. They missed. Okay, that ended up being pretty insane. Uh. This league, I mean, we 2 3 obviously. Uh, lost to two Leyline decks and a main deck, Bajuka Bog deck that also drew like the, the sun, the sun and the stars. Um, this deck felt a little too pod racy for me. Like, Reanimator being a top tier deck and Oops All Spells also being a major part of the metagame, everyone's ready for graveyard stuff. And they're ready for significantly more busted graveyard stuff than this deck is offering. The Lion's Eye Diamond builds get you a little closer to that speed level that at least maybe you can just turn one, dump half your deck and Cabal Therapy twice and, and hold up kind of in like a reanimator's fashion. But this build without the Lion's Eye Diamonds just felt like it was playing kind of a different era of Legacy than most of my opponents were. The ones where we were able to grind were pretty cool, like the Hogak game or like just putting a 16-16 Grave Troll into play and hoping we're alive. That was kind of cool, but this deck is not particularly interactive, and Legacy's just at a place where interaction is really important and also not good enough. Like, interaction is so good right now that it's hard to just chuck a crazy thing onto the stack on turn one and hope it's good because it's usually not and combo decks are so good now and many of them pack their own interaction we did get to showcase the the anti-magic dredge thing where like that that true name nemesis matchup whatever that was where like i felt like i didn't do anything in game one and still won anyway because they did even less and then game two when they had force of will force of will force negation surgical surgical and i still won that game like that that felt like the era of magic that dredge was from where you can really just grind through things but the present day where everyone's just like we're not messing around four ley lines a bunch of other stuff containment priest i got force of will and force of negation backing up my business three surgicals plus snapcaster mage like graveyard decks are so good right now that people are taking them seriously across the board and i mentioned in the deck tech that dredge used to be like it was bad until it was good on any given weekend, like when people forget their hit at home. But at the time, Dredge was the really the only major graveyard deck. So it, like your calculation was literally like, am I worried about Dredge this weekend? Yes or no. But now it's like between Reanimator and 
even the fair decks like is it delver is largely a graveyard deck uro titan of nature's wrath is a card that comes out of the graveyard lands in the extreme opposite direction is also kind of a graveyard deck just graveyards are extremely accessible right now across all types of magic decks the only deck that really doesn't care about its graveyard is like death and taxes like even the blue decks have snapcaster mage it's just like it's a tough sell nobody's ever going to be just without surgical extractions or without ley lines they're gonna have them thousand percent honestly i'm pretty proud of putting up a two three getting some of our money back off this league because it, it felt like an uphill battle from turn one game one when we lost the die roll and they had chalice of the void it's like oh yeah shit as far as the construction of the deck goes obviously lion's eye diamond is an extremely expensive reserve list card and if you don't have it then you don't have it and uh that is unfortunate push your local stores to play proxy legacy by the way on my soapbox real quick but if you don't have access to Lion's Eye Diamond, you can play without it. But I feel like you need it to really hit that present day legacy power level. Decks are built to just mash on turn one right now. Combo decks are. And if you're a, a weird value oriented combo deck that's playing a sideways game that gets hit with splash hate and has a fail rate, uh, like all of those things, I feel like you just want to push the pedal to the metal and get lion's eye diamond in your deck if you if you're if you have access to that card the sideboard felt a little wonky like having to choose between nature's claim or firestorm both of which also get countered by chalice of the void and when the, those could just be chain of vapors or i don't know what would have to happen to support force of vigor in this deck but that card would be really good um maybe we just want to be on serenities and you you can get two mana some amount of the time and against the ley line one of the ma ley line matchups i was like spent the whole game frantically digging for nature's claim to the point where they just hard cast a second ley line and i was ice cold yeah i feel like you just want something something a little cleaner a little smoother but maybe that's just my unfamiliarity with the deck talking where i just don't know how to sideboard with this carefully tuned tools that are available I want a, a blunt instrument because that's what I know how to swing. I need to go to medical school to learn how to use these surgical tools. I don't know. I, I'm willing to believe that too. I'm going to wrap this up. That was my amateur breakdown of Dredge, my amateur piloting of Dredge. We got some cool games. We got some uncool games. We saw Dredge go apeshit. We saw Dredge get apeshitted. And we saw some some cool stuff in the middle where we actually did have some fun interaction in like the back half of the league against the the blue decks and the storm deck that was all pretty cool stuff we got to do ewan thank you for sending dredge into the channel everybody thanks for watching i hope you had fun i certainly did be sure to like comment subscribe check out coalesceapparel.shop use the code boston roll get 10 percent off your order Check out the Patreon, the Discord, all the stuff in the video description below that helps the channel stay on the air. I appreciate you all. See you next time.